And hello everybody and welcome here to the NSA Ray Mobile Open where we're going to have three drivers, two drivers who will finish first and second and one driver who will get in via the fan vote get into this season, Season 7's Mobile Cup Series All-Star Race. As you can see, 22 drivers ready to take to the track. 19 of them are going to be uh, either taking part in other All-Star races or pretty much be watching from the infield. Three of them will be in the All-Star Race. And we are going to introduce to you now a huge panel of co-commentators for this event. I'm being joined here by Trent Dunham, Michael Norman, Dylan Young, and Jessica Shelton. Say hello, everybody. Hello. What's, what's up? And Trent's going Dudley Boys on us again. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> so we're getting ready here for today's mobile open. And a couple of you guys, namely Trent and Michael, you were here for the Oreo Truck Series open. Uh, these are cars, not trucks. Are we going to see the same kind of racing, or do you see something different happening in today's event? Let me point something out to everybody out there, if you can hear me. If you wreck, get the hell off the track. Oh, That's yes, all I have most to say. definitely. And to add on wow. to Michael's statement there, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mobile One cars are definitely much faster than the trucks, so that only means that the racing is going to get even more intense. So hopefully, so hopefully if a crash does happen, these drivers, they're either smart enough to, uh, to to either back out of it, especially when they go uh, four and five wide, because it will happen sooner or later. Now, the two See, that are I got to... Go ahead, go ahead. See, I, me and Trent both have a car represented in here that are, uh, yeah, represented from our, for our teams in this in this field today, so we, we each have, not someone that we're pulling for, but just something to look out for. And, uh, so... Pretty much, what we're trying to say as team motors is don't cause us to lose money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the two that are joining us here, Dylan Young, Deanna Shelton, or Jessica Shelton, uh, either way, I guess, goes. I'll call her Jess for this one. But uh, Dylan, let's start first with you. You are going to be in the All-Star race. Your win ended up coming up earlier on this season at Daytona, so you obviously uh, have good restrictor plate experience coming into this race. What are you going to be watching in this event here with these drivers on track? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm looking at the lineup here. Is even though there's 22 cars in this field, I don't see my teammate there. However, I do see like my teammate, my teammate with uh, James Starbox. However, I do see a teammate of Cassandra Renzi there, and I also see a few other big names that's there: Joshua Collard, Ian Dutta, uh, Kyle Matthews, Levi McIntyre. But the one driver that I'm really looking at that could possibly not only get themselves into the uh, All Series, but probably could win this. Keep an eye on that 14 and Chris Washer. Once the truck open, I think he's going to pull up a Charles Jackson and make all three. I guarantee you. Watch out for the 14. He very well could. He's already locked into the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race. Now, Jessica, I'm going to ask you, your only Mobile Cup Series win came at a road course of Watkins Glen. What kind of notes are you going to be taking here with a restrictor plate race? Well, pretty much the fact that it's been frosted over, which causes more grip and the trucks go faster. So, I just, I don't know. It's just going to be fun to see what's going to be done, who's going to make the right moves, and I'm just probably on, on my side, I'm probably just going to sit in the back and ride along for the ride and then make my moves for the end. That's probably all I've got to do. Okay, uh, this is going to be a question for all of you guys here, and uh, I guess what we'll do is we'll go from uh, right to left, we'll start Trent, Michael, Dylan, and Jess. Um, we had a caution flag come out for an incident that was the second incident of the Truck Series event. They did not throw a caution for the first actual incident. Now, a lot of people thought that was rather debatable. Here today, uh, are you expecting to see something like that, or do you think that the wrecks are going to be much more intense, that there are going to be a lot more cautions that will come out? Well, you do know the NSCRA, we... um. Um, this organization cares about the safety of all of its drivers, and we really hope that we don't see any any big wrecks. But but like you said, that they didn't they didn't uh throw the caution for for um the first wreck of the truck series open where where uh Jake Rogers he actually took took a hard hit to the inside and pretty much flipped his truck right onto pit road. But since he was able to drive away, and there was also another incident at a turn four where uh where uh, the 78 of Jimmy DeFalu w was involved, and there could have been uh, some some liquid on the track. I really think the NNSCRA really needs to get their head together in this and to see that, that, that if something happens like this again in the Mobile One Open, that they'll be on top of it. Yeah, exactly like for what Trent said, just 
Throw a caution for any kind of incident, you know, if especially if somebody hits the walls, you see the cars rolling off and now, um, you know, if if somebody spins out and gets back going, that's one thing. But if there is multiple cars involved or a car slamming into the wall, then obviously it should be a caution. And I don't know what the NSCRA officials were thinking the other day, but uh, I just... I honestly couldn't believe it, and not only that, but Jamie DeFalu ended up staying out on the track for some unknown reason, and you all know what happened. So yeah, let's hope that we with, don't have anything like that happen today. Yeah, I think with how it is with the truck and mobile, they're definitely different how they are. The trucks, they're definitely more durable to wreck, and like Michael said, it does surprise to, you know, see how the caution can come out. But I guarantee you, with these Mobile One cars, these Nationwide cars, I think with the wrecks that are going to happen, they're going to be a lot more intense because their speeds are going a little bit more faster, but you never know, though. Anything can happen at M&M's, especially with the slick conditions. Well, and from what I can tell, I'm pretty sure that NNSCRA officials understand what happened and they're going to probably most likely learn from their mistake and they're going to correct anything that has been done wrong in the past. And I'm pretty sure that they'll, you know, change the rules and get a lot better on this one than what happened to the uh, truck race, so I'm pretty sure I'm positive that they'll do the right thing this time. Okay, we're going to give you guys the opportunity here to be able to make your picks as they're going to be coming out of turn four. Uh, I'm just going to ask that you give your driver pick and then you can explain it as the race goes on. So Trent, who are you looking at here for uh, this event? Okay, okay, well, if I'm looking uh, uh, at one guy who has a lot of, uh, a lot of um, super speedway, it's been, and who and 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 he, he actually uh won a major super speedway event uh at the in the season two finale of the second cup. That guy starting in sixth place right there in that number forty three, Lyndon Wright, as they're about to go green flag racing, boogity boogity, he's my pick. All right, Michael, who are my, you looking at right now, is, green flag racing? My pick is going to be the eight car of Trent Dunham. Trent may not do good super speedways, but I think he's gonna he'll be able to pull it off now. In, in this race with a lot on the line. Dylan. I'm staying with that 14 of Washer. He won that truck open. If he goes two for two, winning at the mobile one, you, bef you better definitely keep an eye on him in the Snickers one. Chris Washer's my pick. Jess? Experience is everything, especially when it comes to plate tracks and other tracks and learning from every little detail that you've been through. So I'm going to go with the uh, 61 of Mercury and the uh, Audi. All right, is wow. There was a lot of contact there between uh, James McLeod and company, but we're coming up yeah, here to the front here, and it looks like uh, Harrison Langford is currently the leaders battling there with Kyle Corbett. Now, one thing I did notice here, and uh, we're obviously not seeing it right now because obviously there's spots in the All Star race on the line, but when we had the drivers for the Mobile One Cup Series All Star race come out here for practice, they didn't seem as you know as excited to go three and four wide racing. It was basically uh, packs of two and three all the way around this large restrictor plate track. But here, obviously, we're seeing that these cars are capable to be able to race in a big pack. Well, you got to think about it, too. A lot of those cars, those guys didn't want to ruin their cars by, by wrecking. So they were all trying to do do, do Jimmy Johnson's style and play it safe. But, uh, no, I also want to mention... Or, oh, sorry. And I also want to mention um, James McLeod. None of us picked him. He started dead last. And, uh, like... It's, it's it's just surprising to even see James McLeod in this in this field and not in the All Star race. Um, he's he's in the middle of the pack right here now. But I look to see maybe, even though he's not my true pick, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt to see him in the front pretty soon. Yeah, I actually forgot yeah, you to make my pick here too, real quickly. I'm gonna go with Ralph Mason because I remember back in history. Ralph and Wolfgang, they work really, really well together here at this track in the All-Star Race. And I'm telling you, Wolfgang, he's already locked into the All-Star Race. I think Ralph's really going to have a lot of, of uh, need to get into the All-Star Race so he can work together again with uh, his brother. Because those two, you put those two together here at this track, they're a dynamic duo. Now back to what you were saying, Dylan. I, and honestly, too, you mentioned about Ralph, You like you just mentioned. I remember watching that. I co-commentated on that race. We saw Ralph do really well and Wolfgang and. That was around season three, season four, and I remember that exactly. They both did really well. And Michael mentioned about McLeod here earlier on about not making the all-star field. How about another few drivers? How about Anthony McCurry in the 61, the Audi in, in the in the uh, Mobile One, the, the only Audi in this field? He's actually also another one in here, and there's also other big names. But I've raced on this track before. I've even won the all-star race here for the trucks. And however, even though it's different cars racing on this track, 
it's simply like Coca-Cola, but a lot more slick. You just got to make sure you got to get a good draft partner and make sure you have a good sta stabilized car. Because if you take that turn wrong, you're going to go sliding up and it's going to cause a big melee. So the main thing is track, con track control and car control. That's what it's really going to be down to. And look at that. Kyle Corbett, he's doing that right now. Jess, also, we you, forgot to mention. I, gotta, I just gotta ask one quick question here to play off of what uh, Dylan said. I gotta ask Jess. Jess, you took part in all three of the All Star Race practices since you're locked into all three of them. Is there a difference of grip between trucks, nationwide car, and sprint cup car? Well, with the speeds the way they are, there, uh, you know, the grip is fine on the track. It doesn't matter what you're in. The grip just seems to be there. But the faster you go, there's a better chance if you go up higher into the like in complete rubber of the high side near the wall, you're going to lose it. You're probably going to hit the wall with all that speed because, like, like we've already discussed, the Snickers is a lot faster than the mobile, but the mobile is a lot faster than the truck. So anything goes here, really. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised of how, from what I'm looking at right now, how Kyle Corbett was able to get to the front and pull away and keep that as well as he's done so far. I mean, it was just really amazing to me about how big of a lead he got and pulled away for a little while. Yeah, Trent, Michael, we're seeing an entirely different race here. These guys, they're going three wide a couple rows deep, but this is not exactly the same kind of racing we saw in the Truck Series event. No, these I was guys... just about to point that out, actually, because cause if you notice, uh, um, uh, in, the truck, in the trucks open, these guys... Wrecked on the first lap. I guess I guess uh, some of the mobile one drivers and some of the uh and some of the drivers in this field who were in the trucks open, they must have been been taking those and, and they really know not to bunch up in the turns because I noticed something because uh, in the trucks open, there was um the lead truck could barely get away from the pack, but but looking at this race right now between between uh Kyle Corbett and um Tanner Sullivan, they're really uh they're really trying to pull away from the main pack, and we're not see seeing as much uh, um, aggressive racing as we did in the trucks. Yeah, Michael, yeah, what, what um, do you think? Is, are they having trouble passing here or something? No, it's it's not that. You know, It all comes down to handling and the way these cars are racing. You know, we're not... These, these these drivers are racy. They're not wanting to stay behind somebody and draft as much as they can. You know, the handling... Uh, what I was trying to mention earlier was we also got to remember how cold the temperatures are. You know, th those are, you know, tie between, uh, like, like how Jess said, the grip is there, but you also got to watch out for the handling of these race cars, too. Handling, I mean, they, it may not all be there, plus the fact that none of these, these drivers really want to stay behind, tucked up, and try to draft to catch up. But, uh, you know, it's it's going to be it's gonna be difficult at times, but once these guys start getting used to the track and getting it to where they, they, they feel their car is right, we should start seeing them... Uh, the, um, branch out and start racing pretty hard. Well, the one thing I'm noticing here is uh, they were single file from like second on fifth. They're actually single file again there with Collard, Michaels, Sullivan, and Trent Dunham. But even in a single file row, they are not really seeming to close up the gap on Kyle Corbett. So I'm not certain. I don't know if, if cold temperatures can play into, um, you know, play havoc with aerodynamics and the drivers being able to suck up to the back bumper of the car in front of them. I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out here. It, I've not seen cars have so much of a struggle of trying to catch the draft of the car in front of them. You see, yeah, it surprised me too. And another thing too, I've, I've also mentioned is maybe that could also be a strategy of waiting to see when they're going to pass the 42 maybe. You never know though, but Kyle Corbett, it, it, you know, I think me and you mentioned this in the Talladega race of mine. Mirror driving, and all of a sudden, you know, you're seeing that right now in this race, and Kyle Corbett, he's doing that right now. He's doing a hell of a job right now. Leading, like, I think most of the laps right now of this race, that was we just crossed the halfway point. Well, you see, even if they, like how Seth said, they would get single file, even if they did, they're not single file for long enough to even make a difference. Well, as soon as they get single file, as soon as they branch off into turns one, one or three, they'll, they'll someone will dive to the inside and it'll just break up the draft. Interesting uh, thing here. Prime example of that right now, the O nine, I believe that's uh um Ralph Mason in the Pontiac. I mean, he was uh he was uh on the outside and then the back straight away. Then just as soon as um he ended turn three, he he just dove down deep to the inside and now he's trying to get around Joshua Michaels in that number twelve Mustang. 
And you know, I'm also, you know, it's interesting because in the uh, practice session for the drivers that are locked into the All-Star race, it seemed like the groups of three and four actually seemed to produce more speed than the drivers that were in like packs of six and seven. It was really interesting that those few cars were able to produce a lot more speed than a big pack of cars, which really seems like a thing that you never hear about at a restrictor play track. Actually, let me ask, uh, I got a question for both uh, Dylan and Jessica. Dylan first and Jessica. As a driver, let's say that you're, let's say you're in the 9 or the 20, at whoever gets second place, and, and, you, and you feel how your car is right now. It's hard to suck up and it's, hard to, and it's really hard to, to draft, like, and your car is kind of handling iffy. What is your strategy right now with about 8 laps to go? I think mainly you just whoever's like right behind you, you gotta get some communication going, saying, "Hey, do you want to pass the leader? If so, we gotta work together because that's the only way how we're gonna have to pass them. Otherwise, Kyle Corbett, he's gonna be definitely locking himself in. But you never know, though. I mean, it's still gonna be you know a few more laps till the end of the races. We're about ready to cross lap 13 to 20. You know, just it's just you never know. I think it's all about timing, and you gotta let the the guy behind you know of we gotta work together. Well, for me, I would actually kind of agree with what Dylan said, but for me, though, I would probably just sit there and grab a drafting partner, and even if they're not my teammate or a different make or whatever, I just sit there and hang out with them, ride and ride and ride and ride, and just try to make sure that I don't fall too far back, make sure it's single file for the most part, get some suck up, and, I mean, like we said, 13 out of 20 so far, there's plenty, plenty of time left, don't make any more aggressive moves, don't, like, quickly dirt to the inside or to the outside because you know you're going to either lose position you might wreck you might lose handling and if you do that then you know not only are you screwed but pretty much people who were drafting you might get screwed too and there would be a lot of temper slurred in the back so my goal would be just to ride and suck up and just stay up near the front single file until the last moment to make my pass trend what do now, you think I, can we can we can now, oh wait wait there's smoke lingering there off that corner uh -oh. Uh -oh. Chris Washer's on pit road. Now. Langford's on pit it's road. Washer, up oh, damn it. No caution. Oh, I think, I think it may have been a wreck down below the apron, but mm, it was that's, off that's turn two. The smoke right lingered off turn Here we go again two. with another one of these wrecks that aren't cautions. NSCR race done it again. Wow. That's what my guess is. There probably could be a wreck down below the apron because I we noticed the smoke happened on turn two. And I may have a bad feeling is that I, I don't think there was any roof damage or anything on the top of their cars. But I think I may have a bad feeling someone may have flipped in that, and I'm I'm certainly guessing it was the first car I saw in pit road that was towards the end, whoever well, watch, that was. you're coming out of turn two. The smoke still lingers a little, and you can see right there on the right side just a little bit. There were skid marks heading down towards the inside retaining wall, and then there's actually some smoke there on the back straightaway too. They may have actually bounced back off the wall back into traffic. Oh, wait a minute. Joshua Collard is now suddenly on the back bumper. This is the closest a second-place car has been on the Verizon Chevy all day, and he looks like he's going to try and go for the lead. Quite well, actually, I, I yeah, can tell. He's, he's a good, it's a good close-up. Joshua knows he can tie his moves good. He doesn't have anyone pressuring pressuring him behind. He's got to kind of make like a dive bombish move to try to see if he can clear him because neither one of these drivers have drafting help. Now, here's the question. Uh, here's the question. Trent, you've been in this situation before. You got the 42 in front of you. You got the 20 about a car length behind you. Well, right now, it's not obviously Joshua Collard's uh, strategy, but I was going to ask, do you ride behind the 42, try and get away, and just settle for the second place finish because that gets you into the all-star race anyway? Well, yeah, see, and I was about to, and I was about to ask, and as we see, uh, Talon Sullivan trying to make a three wide for the lead, and I was, uh, I was gonna ask, um, Jessica that, um, that, um, uh, that, um, Joshua Collin is is one of, um, her closest fans. I was gonna ask if she had, uh, um, any advice because, because like he, because uh, like she said that the track is definitely uh cooled down and there's a lot of grip, but these nationwide cars they have way different aerodynamics, way different than the trucks and the, um. And the, and the uh, Snickers Cup cars. So 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 my question to Jess is: Is that really gonna take take a factor as we now see Joshua Collin and Tanner Sullivan trying to battle for that final for that final transfer spot into the All Star race? Well, if they keep battling like this, it isn't gonna do any good for either one of them, from what I can tell. But uh, yeah, um, it's just that this grip, just this grip, he can go wherever he needs to to make the pass. But I just 
I wouldn't have any advice for Collard because Collard knows what he's doing. I mean, after all, he's a former champion. I don't know if he's a champion in uh, the NNSCRA series or Snickers, Oreo, or, you know, Mobile One, but I have heard that he's a champion in other series. So if there's any advice being given, he knows what he's doing. He's doing his best, and there's a good chance that if any advice needs to be done, it'd be to me because I'm just pretty much a rookie still in a, in a different type of way because I've only got less than a year under my belt, but still. I mean... Yeah, I, know I also know something. I also know something, too. Has anyone knows Trent Dunham, how he's in the back of the field most of the day? He's now up to second. He has been quietly but steadily working his way up to the front as we're about ready to go two laps to go. I great told you to watch out. I told you to watch out for that eight car. I told you he may not have the best luck at, at tracks like this, but he knows how to get it done when 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 shit is on the line. I'll tell you one other guy to watch out for, or actually one gal, I should say, Cassandra Renzi in that 31 has been running inside the top 10 for pretty much this whole event. Has not really charged up to the front. And Dylan, that's one of your teammates there at a Turner Scott Motorsports. She's now actually looking like she's trying to go three wide for that second position. Yeah, Renzi's got good experience in the Nationwide, not only as a teammate and stuff, but also I've noticed her in a few other series in the Nationwide with ter certain rides. You know, she has the 22 in my Outback series, and she's running a similar bracket Lowski type of car in this race. But, oh boy, look at that, how close Trent Dunham got to the 12. But here we go. White flag's about ready to wave. Kyle Corbett's still leading. Tanner Sullivan second. White flag is out. This no. is definitely going to attempt to be some kind of battle for second because they know that they, can, for some reason, cannot catch that 42 of Kyle Corbett. Exactly. That's so, something Sandra. I've noticed. I think, I think we can pretty much concede Corbett's going to make it into the All-Star race because nobody has been able to challenge that 42. And actually, the gap between the 20 and this battle for thirds going on, these guys are kind of shooting themselves in the foot, racing three wide for third place. Oh, yeah, he may want the best look at the 12 there. He's the best shot probably to get Tanner Sullivan right there, but I, I doubt they're going to get it. That's too far of a gap. Yeah, so definitely it's safe to say that the 20, the 42 of Kyle Corbett and the, and the 20 are definitely going to make their way into the All-Star race. So Kyle Corbett in his second season in the Mobile One Cup Series and Tanner Sullivan, a rookie in his first season in Mobile One, those two, they are going to transfer their way into the All-Star race, and I think we can safely say that the uh, 42 could be considered a favorite heading to the All-Star race because that was a strong car all day. Yeah, that car stayed out the front all day long. People barely challenged him for the lead. And another thing, too, was I think he led almost every lap was one of the things. And the second thing was that, you know, I'm not putting hate on Kyle Corbett. I don't think he's going to have the best shot to win, but you never know, though. Kyle Corbett could be a huge surprise playing into that race. I'm anxious to see who the fan vote winner is. Same here. I'm, I'm just completely shocked that the 42 had a dominant run, especially at a big track like this when it's anyone's game. Plus the 20, I mean, if you think the 42 needs to be watched out, look at the 20 of Tanner. He fell back, he came right back up like it was no problem whatsoever. So those two are definitely going to be ones to watch in the All-Star main event. You know, two points yeah. that i got to make here. Number one, Kyle Corbett, yeah, he was strong today, but he's going to be starting at the rear of the field because that's where the drivers who transfer in start in the all-star race. So he won't have the benefit of starting out in clean air like he did today. And secondly, Tanner Sullivan, he it does not have a win in Mobile and Cup, but he's in the all-star race for the Oreo Truck Series all-star race because he had a win at a restrictor plate of Daytona. So obviously his restrictor plate expertise coming into play today. And another Absolutely. thing that I wanted to add is that uh, the like I was anxious to see uh, you, you know uh, NNSCRA they're two for two for not throwing cautions for for showing wrecks and it looked like that this one was much worse than the um than the um truck series over. Speaking of that, we're going to end up having to go take a look at that, That's too. That's exactly to see what, what we're going to do now. We're going to jump back, take mm -hmm. a look at the replay. Chris Washer and I believe the other car was Harrison Langford had problems yeah, off Langford. turn two. Let's take a look and see a replay of what happened. Well, this was all the way back on lap 13. These drivers were battling just outside of the top 10, too. And uh, this is the only incident we had today, and NSCRA did not deem it worthy of a caution. Let's see where the initial contact happens. Uh, it looks like the 60 may have slid up. Yeah, he got up into the 14. And we've seen this before, Michael and Trent, down towards the inside wall, yep. and oh, man. Ooh. Straight to the inside wall, hard impact. 
And there you see, there's where the smoke was lingering on the back straightaway, the momentum. They're still going 125, halfway down the back straightaway. Fortunately, the roof flaps uh, deployed, so they didn't go airborne, but... Yeah, you see, and then this right here, you know, they're they're sliding, they're still sliding, still wrecking, and it's coming up towards the track, and and the CRA says, nope, no caution, guys. See, here's a big difference yeah. between this wreck and the and the truck series wreck. See, the truck series wreck happened at the rear of the field, but this time... See, both wrecks kind of have it under the apron, but this one was mid pack, and I honestly don't see why NSCRA didn't throw caution for this. Probably because um, that they thought the same thing since they were so deep, so deep in the apron and away from the actual racing service that that they didn't think that the caution was necessary. But still, that's too hard of impacts for the four, for the 14 and the 60. Yeah. yeah, and the 60 took a pretty good lick right there, too, and that was uh, not an easy impact. That's uh, right down the inside, too, and you've looked at the past about this track with the All-Star Race. Those cars that go on the inside that go towards that wall, they're not normally easy impacts, so hopefully the 14 and the 60 are right, but Langford, I think, took the worst side of the impact more than the more than uh, Chris Washer there. Well, I'm not really so sure about that. I mean, uh, the, the Chris Washer car actually went head-on. The 60 seemed to hit it more of the on the uh, left front side. If That's still driver side. If there's one driver that should be lucky that they didn't get involved, it was Madison because she was right there, and all that had to happen was a 60 go up in the 14 that was just squeezing so tight. I just thought Madison might have gotten wrecked off of that, but she was lucky. Good point. Yeah, we've we've seen this yeah. all weekend too with the trucks that uh, you know those. Sometimes it's it's three cars that just kind of squeeze into each other, and there wasn't a whole lot of room there. Yeah, they were going four wide off that corner. If you look again, they were they were about four wide coming off that corner, and four wide. You know, I thought they were going to make it work, but guess not. No. Nope. And what really makes me angry is how was the safety workers supposed to get to their truck if they're still going at 220 miles an hour around the track? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I can understand them maybe not throwing a caution if they stayed down towards the, the inside safer barrier, but you got to admit, that 14 car, it wasn't on the racing surface, but it was it was by inches that it wasn't up there. So I, I really do question why a caution did not come out. But nonetheless, Kyle Corbett is the winner, Tanner Sullivan second, so they transfer in. And how ironic, our fan vote winner in the Truck Series race finished in fifth place. That was Charles Jackson. The fan vote winner for the Mobile One Cup Series fan vote finished fifth today. Trent Dunham in the top five. Wow. Once again, right once again, not surprising, but because, you know, everybody loves Trent Dunham. <laughs> <laughs> everyone loves Mr. Sega. <laughs> yeah, everyone loves Sega. So. But now, but now, but now we have a new, a new uh, main question for NSCRA. Are we going to go three for three for having another fan vote winner finishing fifth at the Open, or are we going to have another three for three where there's a wreck and they, and they don't throw a caution? I'm calling both. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna. Well, um, I'm gonna actually uh, let you guys um, say who you think uh, was the surprise of today's race as far as where they finished. I'm gonna just quickly look back here while we're doing this at uh, Henry Nova because he finished way back, and I'm not really sure what happened with the 32. I think he just lost lost the draft after he that. He may wreck. have because he is clearly up to speed, but he was way back behind. Oh these wait, guys. wait, wait, wait. Yeah, uh, you see, like I moment. said, yeah, there were some cars on pit road. I told you, it looked like some cars came down pit road. I thought I saw the 32 on the apron at a point. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I, I don't know. Let's see if we can find out here. Because that is quite odd. I mean, you see, he's up here racing with traffic. Yeah, he lost the draft. He's up here racing with the traffic at this point, and he apparently just lost the draft or something. Whenever the wreck happened, I think it, you know, it slow. Everyone had to slow down for some reason, and then uh, he just, and then it looked like he was coming down Perot at some point. Here you see. Jay yeah, right here. He could have stayed with the forty-one, and he did. Boy, I don't know. He just flat out lost it. Yeah, he lost a little bit each and every lap. Huh. He couldn't get the grab of the draft there, and he just, he just. Lost the grip and bye bye. Went to thirty two. Interesting, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. right there you can see the cars pulling away. But anyway, uh, who who surprised you here today as far as uh, their run? I'm gonna go with one good and one bad. 
the good, I'm really going to have to say Joshua Michaels there in the 12. Hardly even talked about him at all today, unless, like, whenever we mentioned him up there. He finished third. Came so close to catching up to Sullivan there, but great job by the 12. The one bad, I think it, it would have to be Levi McIntyre. He started fifth in this race, I believe. He ended up all the way towards the back in the 19th position. So tough break for McIntyre. Now I guess most of these drivers, they're going to be watching in the infield, watching the Mobile One All-Star Race, so never know, though. Open, right? Now he's back in the uh, in here, and he won it. So Corbett really surprised me in this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like Dylan. One good and one bad. For me, for the good... It, Honestly, it was uh um Cassandra Ren Renzi because as um um as Dylan pointed out earlier, his teammate she really uh su surprised um a lot of people. She just came so close to get into the into the uh All Star Open, but I guess she made her move too early and then she dropped back on the outside. And my one bad has got to be Ian Dutta because Ian Dutta in the ADA he finished in this race 13th, but we normally see the ADA run good at Super uh. At super speedways and tracks like this, so I don't know what what happened. I guess he just couldn't get to the inside like he normally does. Jess, well, who surprised you? Surprised that um Tanner Sullivan was able to keep up to where he, where he was, and he fell back and then came right back. I was surprised to do that. You know, even though Kyle Corbett dominated, that uh, Tanner could be right there. He seemed like he passed everyone out having an issue and. It's just unfortunate that he didn't leave and went away from on Corbett. But um, the one that really shocked me about how bad they did was uh, McLeod. I mean, McLeod started in the back, I think, what, dead last? I think so, And yeah. look look at this. He comes up the 10th, and obviously he was one of the few people who could actually pass because not many people were passing and making, like, their spots, like, their own. And it just... I'm just amazed that this race was completely different from what I'm used to. I mean... It was just completely, completely dominated by the 42 and a little bit of the 20. Well, I'm going to so do... Oh, go ahead. I'm done, Seth. Oh, no. okay. I'm going to I'm gonna do the exact same thing. A uh, driver that I'm surprised at, driver I'm disappointed in. Uh, for the driver that I'm actually really impressed with, Madison Sieber. I mean, this, I think, was uh, a race that even if she didn't win it, she had to finish well because she's going to be in the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race in a team that's been put together by Michael Norman Motorsports because she's locked into that All-Star Race. So for her to finish seventh, I think, is going to show some real promise uh, for that 62 team heading into uh, the Snickers Cup Series All-Star Race. The driver that I'm a little bit disappointed in is it always seems like when the pressure's off, when there's no points on the line, Ralph Mason seems to be a guy that really seems to shine, but he really was not able to get it done today. I think the furthest up to the front he was was somewhere around 6th place, but then he dropped back. And this is going to be a handicap, I think, maybe for Wolfgang Mason, who won't be able to work out the Mason duo in the All-Star race. He'll be uh, left to try and find friends in other places. So, uh, Ralph Mason maybe uh, possibly letting down his uh, brother as far as having a drafting partner of his choosing in the Mobile One Cup Series All-Star race. All right, so this mobile open is over. Three drivers have transferred in, Corbett, Sullivan, and Dunham. Everybody else is going to be having to watch this all-star race from the sidelines as those three will join the drivers already locked into this season's mobile all-star race. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to Cup Part of the Crew today. Also, be sure to subscribe to all these people who help me commentate channels today. The links to their channels are in the description. Uh, be sure to head over to their channels for great series and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, so, and these guys are actually going to be joining me for the, uh, Snickers shootout as well. So, guys, any closing thoughts? Looking forward to the Snickers shootout. Get off! <laughs> Wait, when I come on, Internet CRA. Let's not try to go three for three again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Snicker shootout. That's gonna be interesting. You're gonna see a lot of colorful cars that uh, they're gonna be in there. Some brand new schemes too in the shootout. So can't wait to see who's gonna get a new scheme and all that. So I'm looking forward to it. Just thinking about Snickers Cup. That just makes it a lot better. Faster cars, more action. Hopefully, it won't be a runaway dominating performance. Hopefully, we'll see a lot more closer competition and not. Just Oh, I agree. Don't forget, Snickers satisfies. Yes, it does. <laughs>
Absolutely. Not All as right. good as, not as much as scout. Ah, uh, whatever. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed today's race, and we'll see you guys next time here on the Airshade Force channel, offline racing at its best. Giggles for everybody. Huggies. Snickers for everybody. <laughs> Fun dip. Beans for everybody, I guess. I don't, I don't care. Huggies for everybody. Oh, yeah, Jessica.